What a waste of time. What a waste of time. Just even some of the colleagues uh, of, of my folks here continue to say this is a waste of time. I mean, Troy, uh, Representative Niels said, Cole, I don't think we have the will to impeach Joe Biden. Just for the record, impeachment isn't something you have a will to do. It's something you have to have evidence to do. Which brings me to the next, I mean, you know, you heard about Rep. Don Bacon, who said, when the staff tells you that they can't identify a particular crime, there's a problem. That's a problem. I mean, you can go on and on. It's so exhausting. Um, this is really incredibly exhausting, and I can't imagine our residents sitting at home. I still, every time I look up and I see our former chairman, uh, forever chairman, uh, Elijah Cummings, our first ever hearing in this, in this room was about the high cost of insulin. I think one of the first witnesses was a mother of twins who had to ration her insulin and lost a child because she couldn't afford it. I still remember our previous chairwoman who really did a phenomenal job continuing to talk about the opiate crisis and how the Sadler family was part of a criminal scheme to increase addiction among family members, people just literally losing their family members because of profit, because of folks that were literally drug dealers in suits. All of that to say is this House Oversight Committee, from our committee hearings on the Postal Service, which really matters to our constituents, the high cost of prescription drugs, the housing issues, uh, the, the number of struggles and challenges of everyday Americans. And I say this sincerely. I know you all do, but sincerely, because what a waste of time. Former uh, Oversight Chair uh, Daryl Issa, who serves on Judiciary Committee now, said, I think he goes on and says, there is no clear sense of where the impeachment inquiry is going. It goes on and on. I mean, look, you all, this is an incredibly important committee. We could be doing some phenomenal things and holding currently the Biden administration on a number of issues. Like, I want to know, I want to know about the American Rescue Dollars and where that money is being used. Is it being used towards public health? Is it being used towards the crisis that continues to happen in many of our families being impacted by long COVID um, symptoms? I mean, these are things that we could be doing right now in this chamber. We're not. We're doing this over and over again, and it's, it's a waste of time. I literally, every time I talk to my constituents about this, they don't bring this up. They said, God, when is this going to be over with? I tell them, my colleagues do not know how to lead the campaigning at the steps of the Capitol. When we come in here, we have to literally put that aside and work for our constituents. Work on getting uh, some sort of understanding where we can prioritize making sure that we have access to clean water. What is going on with the lead abatement program within the administration? Talking about the specific challenges that we continue to see in our healthcare system. All of that. Again, we can hold the Biden administration together, Mr. Chairman, on a number of issues we can see eye to eye on and saying we need to use this committee to open it, up, open it up to be the watchdog committee that we are. Instead, we're wasting, we really sincerely are wasting the time of the American people doing this. This is awful for them to see us going back and forth like this. It's so disenchanting for them. And you all wonder why the, 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 the numbers out there of favorability towards Congress is so low. <laughs> they really have no faith in us because of this. This is the kind of stuff we do. When literally my folks are literally fighting for the right to breathe clean air and to, to fight, to sit there and figure out how they're gonna afford asthma inhalers. Yet we're here wasting the people's time. Will the gentlelady yield? Yes, Mr. Chair, and, and I, again, I say this out of somebody that's a social worker at heart. We could do so many things in bipartisan in this committee. I know it. And I think we're right now really, waste, really missing out an opportunity to do that. We really are. Ms. Tlaib, I yield you, to Mr. Well, it's Tlaib. for a question I just wanted to ask you, because you've had tremendous success in trying to clean up dirty water across America. We can actually get things done, right? A absolutely. And, you know, I know my colleague on the other side, we all have a crisis of the water, clean water crisis. We could, like, literally bring in folks in the EPA, bring folks into this chamber right now and ask, where is the Biden administration on the, on the development of their lead abatement uh, initiative? These are the things that I think very much many of my mayors, my local electeds, many of the state folks are asking, 
what can they what can we do as as members of Congress to basically have more transparency in where the priorities are but again I really say this sincerely to all of you we can do better we deserve to do better I remember Chairman Cummings constantly reminding us that we can be better. Okay, what I do appreciate, she gets into this, and if you look like, closer towards the end of the video, I'll start with the end, why not? The end of Rashida Tlaib's rant on how nothing's being done is she's offering this olive branch. You know, she's on the far left in Congress, and she's saying, hey, y'all wanna drag the Biden administration? Let's hold him to the things he said he would do. And it's that's actually something very difficult to sort of be against, right? She's saying like, hey, you want to drag him on where, you know, on clean water, lead pipes, and the money he's allocated, and where that money's actually going, how effective it's being. Let's go. Let's bring in members of the EPA to give us reports on how effective Biden's actually being. I feel like if the sound bites and sensationalism was gone, you could drag presidents in a whole new way with that of just saying like, all right, you say you want to do this? Great. Like, let's see where your money's going and how effective it's actually being. I'm with that. Like I will, you know what? Like I, as someone who's a progressive, I think progressives just love to drag Biden. And that is just a, a fun thing. So if she, and she's giving them the chance saying, hey, y'all like want to score political points and drag Joe Biden. Like I'm giving you the chance to do it in a way that would bring on members of the far left, right? Like people that were like into that, like, mm, I'm into this, right? In, instead of this, you know, Hunter Biden nonsense. Gentle ladies, time's expired. Before I recognize Representative Fry, for what purpose does uh, Representative McLean seek recognition? I'd like to enter something in the record. Um, my friends on the other side of the aisle are desperately trying to deflect from the Biden family. Are you going to keep it the same way? By attacking President Trump this, and his is this family. Her five minutes? But it's not like a very good soundbite because it's not like something that could wind up on TikTok. It's not like a good soundbite in and of itself because she's actually bringing up real issues. She's talking about the opioid crisis, clean water. She's talking about you know climate. She's talking about you know, doing things for constituents, things that are very unsexy and, to be frank, rather boring, which is what politics should be. It should be boring. Things in the Congress, in the Senate chambers, in the Congress subcommittees shouldn't go viral. They should be putting all of us to sleep. The fact that any of the sound bites come out of that place that can have the ability to go viral is ridiculous. Okay, this should be boring. This should be just plain, you know, numbers. That's what governing is. I've been to school boards across the United States of America. Okay, when a school board is running effectively and as it should, it is probably the most boring thing I've ever attended. When it has this rampant dysfunction and, you know, this, this CRT mom, Moms for Liberty nonsense, it is actually quite entertaining. And it should not, none of these civic forums should be entertaining or entertaining in the way that I find them entertaining. I shouldn't be able to go and make content out of it. You know, that's my thing. I want government to be boring again. This is boring. Like what she's saying, she's bringing up boring topics. She's like the postal service. Let's talk about the postal service. And anyone want to talk about the postal service? That's God. I mean, you know what? Like that's like a good test to see, like if she's being sensational, that to me, you're going to bring, I, she said the postal service. I mean, I almost tuned out just at the mention of that, but alas, I mean, they're rehashing the Hunter Biden thing uh, with no, they're not going to impeach. They're not going to impeach at all. Uh, they're not going to actually move forward with it. All they need to do is run down the clock for the next election. So all of them can use that to fundraise and to, you know, get the great uh, Supreme Leader Donald Trump back into office. I mean, it's one of those things like, you know, I think the Hunter Biden thing is absolute just nonsense. However, you know, like most conservative things, you just keep saying it and saying it, it becomes true. You know, and you could come up with information and rebuttals and, you know, attack disinformation, but they're just going to keep saying it. And lastly, very interesting about Rashida Tlaib, she has a very high approval rating in her district. Her district likes her and they like that she can get things done for them. I mean, the, you know, she, the rest of the nation is we run her through the gauntlet because, you know, she thinks Palestinians shouldn't be murdered but her own district is about it and she has received like overwhelming support in the wake of that and her district is the district that biden needs to win if he wants to win the state of michigan if he loses her district that's it almost impossible to win 
Michigan with by losing Rashida Tlaib's district. So uh, I mean that part that part's that's on Biden to you know stop uh, sending you know bombs to. You know, <laughs> that's another video, but you know that's in his court. The Republicans, you know, making doing things that actually benefit people. You know that's in their court.